वेलकम बैक दिस वुड बी आर फाइनल क्लास ऑन एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चंस फॉर यूपीएससी प्रीलिम्स वी वुड बी कवरिंग कंटेम्प्रेरी टॉपिक्स फॉर इकोनॉमिक्स नाउ अंडर इकोनॉमिक्स व्हाट वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट आर द मेजर इंडिसेस वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द मेजर अपॉइंटमेंट्स सम ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स एंड सम ऑफ द फैक्ट्स फ्रॉम बैंकिंग साइड सो दिस वुड बी द बेसिक आइडियाज दैट वी वुड बी कवरिंग नाउ सम ऑफ द सेबी इनिशिएटिव्स so sebi uh, is one of the major regulators of security markets in india now there were few things that sebi was in news recently first was that it would be tightening the algorithm to minimize the instances of flash crashes that is reduction in the uh, price and this was mainly done for the nsc algorithm account uh, which accounts for nearly 16% of the algorithm trade so nsc accounts for 16% of the algorithmic trade and that is what would be governing this uh, by tightening the instances of flash crashes the next is uh, the merger of telenor and airtel and uh, this would boom up the airtel services in some of the major areas where airtel is the major provider so it is uh, andhra pradesh bihar maharashtra gujarat eastern up western up and assam then you have establishment of the committee of corporate governance this was done under uday kotak who is the managing director of kotak mahindra then you have the setting up of investors protection and service fund now investors service fund aims to provide minimum facilities however the investment protection fund uh, tries to uh, put penalty that is levied by the commodity exchange so these are the two services that have been recently introduced and the most important is providing option trading in commodity futures commodity futures sorry now uh, let's understand the concept of option trading or option contract that's a very very interesting concept to understand we'll be covering this in more detail when we'll go further with the chapters on economics for class 11th and 12th now to understand options uh, let's say we are trying to bid out certain uh, share let's say i am trying to bid on nifty the current price of the nifty is 6000 and i say after 2 months i expect the price of nifty to rise up to 6100 and that is what i am bidding for or that shows my right to buy so under option contracts you have two options one is call and other there is put so we'll first talk on the call option so i say after 2 months 1600 6100 would be the price of nifty and therefore i buy certain shares of nifty at 6050 assuming that if it would rise to this amount by 2000 uh, after 2 months i would have the right to buy that means after 2 months i would sell my shares at 6100 and the remaining 50 rupees that i have put up less during this time would become my profit per share so if i am buying 100 shares my profit would come to 5000 however during this time you are putting in some premium so let's say you are putting up a premium of 30 rupees per share or so on so even if i am putting 30 rupees per share as a premium my cost comes to 6080 and after 2 months if the price is 6100 that means i still have a benefit of 20 rupees per share and if i am purchasing 100 share that profit comes out to be 2000 that is one thing now the other important thing is let's say after 2 months the prices go up to 6300 that means still i would be allowed to sell my share at this price because i have an option contract that shows and that is valid that if the price reaches 6100 or more i would be eligible so despite the fact that i got the option at 6050 and 30 rupees per pre, uh, per share premium so let's say it's 6080 i can still sell it at 6300 and i would be getting a benefit of 220 per share so if i am buying 100 share that would be a kind of bet that i would be winning during this time however if after 2 months the price of the share remains 
let's say 6080 which is below the bid amount which i had said would be 6100 then uh, all the amount that i have put up goes into loss and i don't earn a single penny so it's a kind of bet that you are putting up so that's under the call option what happens under the put option under the put option you have the right to sell that means you say that the price of the nifty would decrease let's say if i am having the premium and everything my final cost comes to 6080 but i have the right to sell saying that after 2 months the price of the nifty would become 5500 So what I am betting is that after two months the price of the share would decrease, and if this not if this does not come true, I would lose all what I have put into. So that is how call and put option works under the option trading. And option trading has been started in commodity futures. So you have only top five. in the total trading turnover value of the last 12 months that has taken into account and minimum 200 crores is done for the agricultural crops and the agricultural processed commodities and the remaining 1000 crore is for other commodities so that is some of the major initiatives put up by sebi the next is some of the new currencies released so one rupee new note has come up that is uh bluish green in color these were discontinued in 1994 uh, the new note would have the sign of ashokan pillar and the sagar samrat oil exploration rig that would be uh, put over it now there is one very interesting thing all the currency notes in india which are in circulation are published by rbi however one rupee note and one rupee coin are the exception which are done by ministry of finance and they do not have the signature of the governor of rbi rather they have the signature of the finance secretary so these are some of the important things you must keep in mind and this section becomes important keeping in mind the recent demonetization drive then there is a proposal to start up the new 2000 notes uh the printing would start after june 2017 after a formal approval is uh, gets into play new 500 rupees notes have come uh these are the new series after the new notes released after demonetization so that's of very recent news and you would have the letter a that would be put up in these notes again they would have the signature of the uh, governor urjit patel who is the recent governor of rbi and have the year 2017 as the signature uh, the old notes would remain valid the notes which were printed after demonetization would remain valid and these new notes which would be released would have the logo of swachh bharat so which logo would be there is important and other 500 notes it would be swachh bharat logo and other rupee one note it would be sagar samrat oil exploration rig the next is in june india reached the highest forex reserves now india's forex reserves or forex is uh compri is made up of three components the first is the foreign currency asset the next is the special drawing rights and the last is rbi's reserve position with imf or the international monetary fund now these three together constitute the foreign exchange reserves of which the foreign currency asset is the largest component and this time there has been an increase in the fca or the foreign currency asset and due to this increase the forex for uh, the june has been the highest ever recorded The next is there has been a new definition that has been given to the startups. Now the startups would be considered if they have a turnover less than twenty five crores and seven uh, years from the incorporation would be the tenure where they would be considered a startup. In case of biotechnology firms, this duration would be ten years and all the applications could be filled up by an online process. the major fdi destinations the foreign direct investment destinations across the globe the top 3 destinations are united states china and india the brics nation that's brazil russia india china and south africa together have 22% of the global gdp but get only 11% of the global fdi inflows so that is again uh, uh, important to understand and this report has been given by the world investment report developed by united nation conference on trade and development which has come into place since 1991 the next is 
the idea to decide FDI proposals in 60 days, so that's again one of the recent initiatives that has been done. This has been done keeping in mind the abolition of the Foreign Investment and Promotion Board. The idea to abolish this was to provide ease in doing business and that was the way you could promote more startups. So this has come into uh, news recently and this is very very important that the Foreign Investment and Promotion Board has been abolished. A uh, four weeks timeline has been given to transfer all the pending cases which lie with the FIPB and this has been decided by the finance ministry. Now talking about some of the major indexes. Uh, the first index that we would be talking about is the Global Retail Development Index. India occupies the first position. The title of this report was known as Age of Focus and it again talks about ease of doing business in the 30 developing nations of the world. Next to India comes China and uh, India's retail is expected to double by 2020 and reach 48 dollar uh, billions. This report was developed on 25 macro uh, economic and retail variables. Some of the payment banks that have been established in India, uh, first is Airtel, the next is India Post and the last is Paytm. Uh, Paytm is the first bank in India to offer cashbacks on deposit. Uh, all these, majorly all these banks allow a deposit of up to 1 lakh in the wallet uh, or in the bank and they do not allow loans. The next is Reconstitution of the oversight uh, committee has been taken place and this committee basically deals on tackling the bad loans. So if the interest is not repaid or the principal amount or both of these is not repaid, this comes into play and it tries to tackle all the bad loans that exist in the market. It helps to order, uh, operationalize the banking ordinance and facilitate the decision making of the banking. The next is brand finance list. Now this list, according to this list, this brand finance is a global brand valuation and strategic consultation firm. Uh, in India, it says Tata is the most valuable brand followed by Airtel, LIC, Infosys and SBI. So these are the top 5 rated brands in India. Again it says ITC is one of the most powerful brand and is the only country's brand which is rated AAA and has a brand strength score of 86. So this is again very important. Now some important MOUs, one of the MOUs is signed between Amul and ISRO. Amul is the brand name of the Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation, GCMMF and the memorandum of understanding with ISRO talks about providing the assessment for the fodder uh, acreage by the means of satellite observation and space technology. So what Amul does is it nearly procures 150 lakh of milk every day from 35 lakh milk producers in 18,500 villages and this Gujarat Cooperative Federation is the largest milk cooperative in the world and uh, this was established under Vargas Kurian in 1973 and is now jointly owned by 3.6 million milk producers. So another memorandum of understanding was between BSNL and Facebook and Mobivik. So Mobivik is an app that would facilitate the digital sale of BSNL sims from its application or through the website and for the Facebook it would be a kind of express Wi-Fi program. This express Wi-Fi program already covers 700 Wi-Fi uh, wi spots in four states of Uttarakhand, Gujarat, Rajasthan and Meghalaya. The idea is to expand the internet connectivity over India and to go to as much 20,000 hot spots uh, in India. Uh, it would also be complemented with low cost, high bandwidth services. Again, some of the countries which are already following this model of Facebook are Indonesia, Kenya, Nigeria and Tanzania. So these are some of the highlights about the two memorandums. The next is GFI data. GFI is a US based think tank that is global financial integrity and uh, it published a report which, said, which was titled illicit financial flow to and from the developing countries during 2005 to 2014 and it came out with a report that nearly 770 billion dollar black money entered market during this period in India and uh, therefore you have a need for more uh, anti-corruption measures to come up. 
Now, the sovereign rating list released by Fitch says India is rated triple B negative and that shows one of the lowest investment grade ratings in India. Uh, the new coal linkage policy has come into play. We would be covering the highlights of each of those. Uh, now, these, the to these topics that we are touching are really very, very important. So, you should not miss them out. The new coal linkage policy has been approved by the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs and it talks about providing uh, ample supply of fuel to the power plants by the process of reverse auction. Uh, the next is ARC would have a minimum corpus of 10, uh, 100 crores in 2019. Now, ARC is registered under Section 3 of the Securities and Reconstruction of Financial Asset and Information, uh, sorry, Enforcement of Security uh, Interest uh, Surface Act that is called as, which was released in 2002. Uh, this has also come into play in other countries like Malaysia and Korea. This was further strengthened by the Narsimhan Committee uh, second which talked about setting up the recommendations on the line of the asset management companies which are present globally and finally this is regulated by RBI and talks about the stressed assets which exist. The next is rules for the joint lender forum. Uh, so these rules have been tightened by RBI. The idea is to again revitalize this stressed asset as we talked about the RCAP and bring into place in CAP that is the corrective action plan should come into play. DIPAM, this is again very very important. Uh, you had the department of disinvestment dis which was set up as a separate department in 99. Now this department has been dissolved. This function was handed over to Ministry of Finance in 2004, finally dissolved and in 2016 new department known as DIPAM has come into play which is Department of Investment and Public Assist Management, Asset Management and this advises the union government on financial restructuring. So recently it was in news because of the Nalco disinvestment that was going up and 10% of the Nalco shares have been disinvested for rupees 1200 crore. So these are some of the highlights for DIPAM. Very very important topic, the new IIP and WPI, the wholesale price index and the, uh, the index of industrial production has been uh, introduced. Now till now the base year was 2004 and 5. However, for GDP, for consumer price index, the base year was shifted to 2011-12, but for them it remained the older one. So there was a difficulty in bringing parity in the assessment and therefore new series of IIP and WPI were released and these have a base year of 2011 and 12. Now again, IIP now includes, uh, there were 809 manufacturing and 55 mining which have now been regrouped under 521 items. It now also includes the technology items like mobile phones, LEDs, tablets and this has been revised after a period of 13 years. Again the number of wholesale price index items have increased from 676 to 697. So around 20 items have been added there. Now committee on virtual currency, we have already talked about this when we took the class on cryptocurrency, when we talked about bitcoins. So the idea in India is whether we should legalize the currencies, the virtual currencies as Japan has done or not. As a result, you have a kind of committee, nine member committee that was established which is headed by Dinesh Sharma, which talks about introduction of virtual currency in India. And again, uh, considering the same virtual currency, there were issues relating to cyber security threats and 11th member committee headed under Meena Heem Chandra from RBI has come into play to talk more about cyber security issues. Now again some of the major indexes, the first is travel and tourism competitiveness index released by WAF in 2017, India ranks 136, uh, so, sorry there are 136 nations that are, sorry 136 nations that are ranked on 14 dimensions, India ranked 40, the rank of India in 2015 was 52, the first country for tourism is Spain, they are followed by France and Germany. Now these indexes are important, last year there was a direct question on index. The next important index is economic freedom index. India ranks 143 out of the 186 nation. This was released by the US body known as Heritage Foundation. India scored 52.6 points. Uh, this economic freedom is based on 10 factors. The first country to score is Hong Kong, Hong Kong followed by Singapore and New Zealand. United States ranks 17 
and China at a 111th position. The next is EMEIA Fraud Survey 2017, uh, also known as EY Europe Middle East India and Africa Fraud Survey. India ranks 9th among the 41 countries which were surveyed for the corrupt practices and bribery. The next is Energy Architecture Performance Index. Now, India ranks 87 of the 127 countries. This is part of the Geneva based World Economic Forum. Uh, 18 indicators are given on three sides of the energy triangle. So, on the energy triangle, one side you have energy growth, you have energy access, and environmental uh, stability. The top nations are Switzerland, Norway, and Sweden. So, these are the top nations on energy architecture. Now, similar to the global uh, index, the global innovation index, India has released an India innovation index, which would be a state-wise assessment for the various states of India. This was proposed by Niti Aayog and CII. The runs would be based and would come out through the uh, portal itself. This would follow, as we said, the global innovation index, which uses 82 indicators. The next is corruption perception index. India ranks, ranks 79 out of the 176 countries released by Transparency International. Uh, first place is occupied by New Zealand and Denmark. The next is Global Talent Index. India ranks 92 of the 118 countries. Again, it is produced by the Global School of Einstein uh, in collaboration with HCLI of Singapore. The top countries are Switzerland, Singapore and UK. The next is Inclusive Development Index. India ranks 60 out of the 76 developing nations. Again given by World Economic Forum. Talks about inclusive growth and development reports. Uh, now there have been different ratings under different groups. So advanced economies, Norway, Luxembourg and Switzerland are the top countries. For developing nations, Lithuania, Azerbaijan or, and Hungary are the top nations. The next is International Intellectual Property Index. Now, this is an index where India is performing extremely poor. Out of the 45 countries, India ranks 43, that is far behind. Uh, the title of the report was Roots of Innovation. That means there is a lack of innovation that is coming from India. US, UK and Germany are the top rankers here. The index includes 90% of the global GDP and 7 new economies that have been included this time are Egypt, Hungary, Kenya, Pakistan, Philippines, Saudi Arabia and Spain. The next is Employee Compensation Amendment Bill 2016. This has brought into uh, play after the amendments of the Employees Compensation Act 1923. It talks about compensation up to 1 lakh if the employee is injured in an uh, industrial accident and hefty penalty to the employer. Also the employer would be penalized if they fail to inform the employee about the right to compensation. This penalty can vary from 50,000 to 1 lakh. There have been certain am amendments which have been made to the NABARD Act. Now this talks about the development bank. So there has been the increased authorized capital from 5,000 to 30,000 crores and beyond 30,000 they can still increase with the permission of RBI. The change, there have been changes in the long title and uh, they have also bring up, brought up uh, handlooms and medium enterprises into the same uh, concept. The next is SBI merger. Now some of the important mergers. State Bank of India, you have five state banks and the Bharti Mahila Bank that has been merged with the SBI. SBPJ, State Bank of Bikaner and Jaipur, Hyderabad, Mysore, Patiala and Travancore have been merged and finally you have a unified branch which is SBI. The market share has increased to uh, nearly 23%. Now you have again important merger, Vodafone and Idea have been merged. Idea has been merged under the brand of Vodafone. It would create the world's second largest um, network telecom company uh, by overtaking Bharti uh, Airtel. And this would be second largest after China Mobile in China. 400 million customers are there with 35% customers and 41% revenue market share that is there. Again, 41% of the shares lie with Vodafone, 26% with Idea and rest of it would be with public. This merger would be completed by 2018. 
establishment of enforcement department this would monitor the banks in case they violate any of the rules bring up speedy and uh, regulatory compliances this would be operational from 1st april 2017 and has been released by rbi the next is gal this is again very very important general anti avoidance rule effective from 1st april 2017 now this prevents company from routing their transactions to other foreign nationals and then bringing it into india to avoid any kind of taxation so it department has the power to scrutinize any such transaction which is deliberately being structured in order to avoid any taxation and india is the 17th nation in the world to have laws that talk about closed tax loopholes The next is NK Singh panel. This has brought up the reports to the changes in the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act. It had four volumes. The first volume talks about the fiscal roadmap and fiscal policy. The second talks about the international experiences with the organizations of World Bank (ILO). The third volume talks about the center state issues, and the last volume talks about the national and the international appropriateness of the fiscal policy. The steel policy of 2017. it aims to double the steel production by 2030 uh, bring in fresh investment in the steel sector create new jobs under the steel sector make our steel industry globally competitive with the other industry bring in technological advancements promote inclusive growth one of such trial projects is the greenfield steel project that has been brought along the coastline under the sagarmala project and this would again include a cluster based approach the first international exchange has been established at gift city near gandhinagar in gujarat the india inx is a wholly owned subsidiary of bsc this would be functioning 22 hours a day would have uh, 250 trading members a turn around time is nearly 4 seconds for this and this would bring the indian firms on an equal footing with the foreign firms the next is financial data management center this committee was headed by ajay tyagi and this would set up a uh, fdmc under the aegis of uh, the financial stability and development council to integrate all kind of financial sector and bring in data aggregation the next is tourism zones now there are various tourism zones that have been developed uh, two of the major projects are the swadesh darshan scheme that is uh, visiting the pilgrimages in india Uh, by developing tourist circuits like north eastern circuit the buddhist circuit tribal circuit and so on so you have 13 thematic circuits that have been developed and the next is the prashad scheme that is pil- pilgrimage rejuvenation and spiritual augmentation drive it would involve nearly 100 crore rupees as the expense and the 13 cities that have been included are Am- ajmer amritsar amravati and so on we have the whole list at exam race you can just go through the list there now these are the list of some of the major appointments definitely i need not to uh, uh, speak each of those some of the major ones are the appointments done through the uh, in the banks then you have the executive director of rbi who has been appointed and the uh, chairman of the internet internet and mobile association of india some of the important topics that we have not covered here and we plan to cover those in uh, exclusivity in detail in the further lectures one of the most important ones is gst the goods and service tax then you have the economic survey double taxation avoidance agreement is really important these days after the demonetization and all these economic changes so you have the india and singapore which have recently amended the double taxation avoidance agreement then the questions on masala bond and option trading or futures that we have already discussed uh, masala bonds still remain we will cover those in detail in a separate class so all these are really very very important topics uh, we have already covered some of the expected topics related to health computers space science and technology environment biodiversity so this would help you bring up a holistic perspective towards the end we would have one of the uploads on exam race where we would have the list of all the expected questions and all the uh, videos that were 
covered under expected questions so you can quickly go through these towards the end uh, wish you very good luck for your prelims examination definitely after the prelims we would be continuing with more classes we would be focusing on art and culture ethics major substantial parts of ge uh, geography optional and definitely the general studies have a good day and all the best for your examination